The Glitter Boom Girls Podcast. I'm Robbie Ann McPherson on the East Coast. I'm Amy Asberg on the West Coast. So today's topic, we're going to reach back into the uh, corners of our brains and the scars in our hearts, and we're going to talk about punishment. We're going to talk about getting in trouble and what happened to us when we did, and... Um, we're basically going to hold our parents' uh, feet to the fire and uh, probably embarrass them slightly. So shout out, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> and incidentally, everybody, my mom is here today. Say hi, mom. What a great day. Hello. Say, you have to say it louder, mom. Hello. Okay, M- mom's reclining on the couch with the headphones on and... Um, she may be monitoring this conversation for quality purposes. So, but is this a good day for us to talk about this with your mom right there? Are you? You know what? I bad? think it's. The, I think it's the perfect day because okay. we have a built-in fact checker. You know, and um, uh, so you know, we'll we'll figure it all out. But uh, all right. let's start with you, Aim. So, give me, um, in in your brain. What is the worst thing that you ever did and got caught and punished for as a kid? The things that I got beat down for, let's just go right to it. Back in the day, everybody got spanked. It seemed like it was normal to get hit with a belt. (laughs) I'm laughing now. Um, I got in trouble for the dumbest things. I didn't actually really do anything all that bad, but I remember getting completely... We'll talk about later why I get I got beat down for these things, but they all had to do with me wasting food or like cutting up like five bananas <laughs> or not eating my tuna fish sandwich. You know, I'd get beat up for these crazy things. But I think the worst thing I did was an actual accident. And it was that I was pulling a gosh, did I get beat for this or was my mom just too busy taking my sister to the hospital? All right. My sister and I were fighting over this tin. It was a tin little thing of cookies or something, but there was crayons inside of it, right? You know how you repurposed tins back in the day? Yeah. Like especially those butter cookie tins where you would think it was cookies. Yeah. And you would open it up and it was sewing stuff and you'd be like, oh, burned. Yeah. Well, there was this pretty tin, but it had this giant piece of metal (laughs) at at the hinges that was totally just right there. And we were, my sister and I were kind of tugging back and forth on it and I ripped it from her and I sliced her hand open. <gasps> yeah. So I technically sliced her hand open, right? Wow. That was the worst thing I did. Blood everywhere, squirting everywhere. You know, that was the worst thing I did. I didn't mean to do it. I did mean to rip it out of her hand. So that was the worst thing I did. Got beat for that. But I think um, the time I got in the most trouble was over a tuna fish sandwich, everybody. I don't like mayo. I don't like egg salad. I don't like potato salad. I don't like chicken salad. I don't really like condiments, right? So my mom gives me a tuna fish sandwich, and I just was, I still haven't eaten one to this day. I'll eat some ahi. But yeah, do not a- give me- ahi is a mile away from tuna okay, fish sandwich. Okay, I'm though. trying to figure out, like, do I, have I eaten tuna since 1981? No, I haven't. Tuna fish. Anyway, got beat down for not eating this tuna fish sandwich on wheat, by the way. Wait, okay. Another time. I, can I just hit pause? Because I have to break this down a little bit. Okay, all first right. of all, what is your aversion to condiments? They're too, um, I'm a texture person, and they're too um, gushy and mushy, and they remind me too much of things that come out of your nose, and I don't even want to say it. It gives me the wrong image in my head. So even to dip something, I'll dip a tiny little bit. I'll put the tiniest amount of condiment on a burger even. I don't like saucy weird the texture it's the texture of mayo everybody it's not my thing okay and And ketchup mustard same thing they don't have the same consistency they're a little more watery but i don't really care for them either okay all right and so number two this tuna the tuna in question yes was the tuna just 
pink tuna? Was it albacore? Was it mayonnaise? Did it have celery in it? Was there a special albacore, recipe? celery, wheat. Whatever it was came straight out of a can and was the cheapest thing at the grocery store. No offense. Okay. So it wasn't great tuna. Was the bread Nothing toasted? Nothing was great in the house. You know, all due respect, everything was canned or frozen. Okay. And the bread was not toasted or it was toasted? Toasted? Girl, please. That bread was probably... Uh, it's probably mold on that bread. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, that, that's going too far. No, it just, I had never even tried it. She's like, you're going to eat this. And I smelled it. I was like, whoa, not my thing. Okay. And then, so the tuna fish sandwich is placed in front of you on a table. Yes. And there then... was a picture taken. <laughs> no, this is the craziest thing. I'll find the picture for you all. There's a picture taken of me holding up the sandwich and smiling like, what is this? Before we got down to like, hey, by the way, you got to eat this. And I'm playing with my sister and this boy, Jeffrey, who we used to babysit every day after school. Mm -hmm. And we all were kind of given these sandwiches. She took a picture of us. And I'm holding mine up, smiling for the picture. Little did I know I was going to get hit with a belt within like 10 minutes of that picture. Okay, so the picture's taken. And then what goes down? I, I took a bite thinking it was going to be some very plain turkey or something. I didn't even like sauce on my pizza. Like, I don't know, you guys. Maybe I was annoying. And then uh, I was like, whoa, what's this? I don't like this. Well, you better eat it because I made it, you know. And I was like, I don't like it. Well, too bad. You know how it was. Okay, so you didn't, so A, you didn't know until you bit into it that it was tuna. Correct. Okay, okay, I understand now. And so then you went yuck and then, you know, the belt started swinging. That was it. Yes, and I think the one when I was four when I cut up like five bananas was probably a worse beating we're playing house. My sister, I was like, I'm the mom and you're the kid. And I cut up a whole thing of bananas. And of course, she's like two. So she ate like, you know, a half of a banana. And then I wasted the rest of the bunch. Mm -hmm. So Out. clearly, your misdeeds centered around food. And they centered around waste. And mm. they centered around not listening to what was told. You're going to do this. No, I don't like this. You, you're getting beat okay and what about okay so i uh i think the worst punishment that i ever had was when i was in sixth grade we got our uh christmas um like mid-year report cards and um unbeknownst to anyone my eyesight had been going bad Aww. so I I was having a lot of trouble reading and you know I'm squinting at the chalkboard and I things were I, I would get these weird headaches that weren't the normal migraines that I got um but then those would turn into migraines you know so I didn't I didn't do so hot I, all my I still had all B's or above but all my grades went down like I went from an A to an A minus. I went from a B plus to a B, you know, it was like that. Ooh. And, uh, and in library class, yes, library studies, um, the woman who couldn't stand me because I was always asking questions about one thing or another, but she said that, um, that I, I forget how she worded it on my report card, but it said, uh, doesn't doesn't do enough effort. Like you know, I don't try. Basically, Stop what she it. said. Yeah. So, um, and I remember so vividly knowing this report card was coming because you know how they would tell you your grades ahead of time. And we uh, we went to see Superman. I can't remember which one of the Superman movies, but um, it was one of the you know Christopher Reeve Superman movies, and it was like a few days before I knew my report card was coming home. And I remember just sitting there watching that movie with a knot in my stomach. Like I just, I couldn't enjoy anything, you know? So I bring the report card home and my mother saw it first. And she gave me this huge lecture about the library lady saying, I don't try hard enough. <laughs> and then my dad comes home and my dad hauled my ass into his office like his home office area and oh. sat me down in his chair paced back and forth and screamed at me for like an hour 
And so, what were the, what was the screaming? What did it? He what was livid. He was like, you know, you bring home a report card like this, and you think that you're going to keep these Christmas presents, and you, you know, I mean, it was like it was brutal. And I said, I said, well, but Dad, I still got bees you know and he goes every single one of these went down every look at this a to a minus a plus like it was bad and I remember staring at this like time magazine cover of the the Jonestown massacre (laughs) which was like the cover of Newsweek or time or something and I just remember staring at it like sitting in this chair my dad's like pacing back and forth you know screaming about this report card And then, you know, it turns out like three months later, um, my sixth grade teacher finally one day sees me like, like, you know, Mr. Magooing at the chalkboard. And he's like, can you see this? And, And I'm like, it's, it's like fuzzy. So he sends me down to the nurse. And, you know, the nurse is like, well, look at the eye chart. And I could read like two lines down, you know, I couldn't see anything. So, um... They uh, sent a note home and told my parents to get my eyes checked, which I did. And it turned out that I my eyes were like headed toward where they are now, which is really bad. <laughs> like I can't. By see the way, a I thing. just looked up the Time magazine cover from the Jonestown deaths. Guess what date it was? It corroborates your story, December fourth, nineteen seventy eight. Yeah, that's uh, that's about right. That is about right. Now. I want to ask Miss Mrs. Robbie Ann, Robbie Ann's mother, what she remembers about this report card. Yeah, Mom, do you remember this report card? No. No, Mom claims uh, she she does not recall. What? Not at all. Well, she wasn't no. the one as mad at you. We would have to get to your father. Now, was there major guilt, I want to know? Ask her if she felt horrible when she found out your eyesight was messed up. No, you didn't feel bad? No. No. Not really. No, I mean, I mean, did you feel bad? Did you feel bad because you were like screaming at me about my report card and then it turned out that the big reason my report card went down was because of my eyesight? No. Nope. All right, well, moving on. Moving All right, on. so, I mean, that, but you know what? That lines up with the 70s. Right. I mean, that's just how it was. Which, you know, it was the decade of like. Like, um, oh, well, it was the decade of, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> You're all right. Walk You're it off. Shake it off. Yeah. It was it the was walk the it off decade. Of shake it off. Right. That's so funny. That that would be the exact response of anyone in my family. Okay. Well, that that is right on brand and right on trend. Mm-hmm. So what was another thing you got in huge? So, okay. That was something that was beyond your control. But what's something you actually did wrong and you got caught? Um, well, I, uh, <laughs> oh no. And this better not be sneaking those diet candies from the kitchen. No, 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 no. This is a school thing. So the school what things are do? funny because I was never bad in school, right. you know, like a naughty, I, I just did like oddball things and, you know, would get in, in, in trouble for it. So, um, in fourth grade at lunch, uh, you know, we had this big lunch room that was like half the gym. So they would put all the tables out, you know, and it was loud. It was like, blah, 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 like this echoey, noisy place. And the, the lunch ladies, um, you know, they, they would try to maintain order, but it wasn't that easy. And these were lunch ladies out of central casting to like, you know, sort of grandma types, um, and I'm sure really nice women, right? But to us, it was like, you know, <laughs> they were the wardens. So um, my friend Pam, oh, shout out, Pam. So my friend Pam and I were uh, goofing around at, uh, of course, we were always like making fun of something or entertaining people. And we got a little loud. And uh, so this, <laughs> the, the lunch lady, she does the lights on, lights off thing. You know, and everyone's like, Ooh, right? And they, they quiet down. And uh, Pam and I made some crack, you know. And so she turns the lights back on, and then the the noise starts to kind of get louder and louder again in the lunchroom. And 
Pam and I start getting louder and louder. So the lady comes over and she's kind of walking by our table and she's like, hey, lower your voices, lower your voices. Now, what do you think I did? <laughs> she I, loud and you were like, oh, rah, rah. no, no, I went, did you hear that, kids? We got to <laughs> lower our voices. <laughs> and Pam starts busting out. And then the lady comes over, and our principal name was Mr. Samter. She's like, would you like to tell your little joke to Mr. Samter? <laughs> That's kind of bold of you, really. <laughs> I thought it was funny, you know, but, you know, and we both were like, no, sorry, you know, and then she walked on. And I can't imagine. She probably went home and was just like, I'm going to kill one of these kids one of these days, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that milk carton and pour it over her head little brat right oh my gosh well did you get in actual trouble or did she let that fly um no I never got sent to the principal Pam did once um Mm. but Pam was literally the smartest person in the class and she went on to be our valedictorian uh so she said and I can't remember now what she did it was probably something similar though because we were cut-ups you know like we just thought we were so funny and so she had to go to sit in Mr. Samter's office and she was in there for like a half an hour and she came back and I was like, what happened? And she goes, nothing. She said, I went in there and he said, how are you today, Pam? And Pam said, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? And he said, I'm okay. And he said, why don't you have a seat? And she said, okay. And he goes, would you like some candy? Cause he had a dish of, you know, Brock's whatever on his desk. And she uh, ate a candy And then she just kind of sat there and she said, he just asked me some general questions like, you know, so what, you know, what do you think of, uh, history or, you know, history class or whatever. How, how about that Jonestown, Jonestown massacre? (laughs) Jonestown massacre. (laughs) Yeah. So, well, uh, did your principal at your school SWAT the kids? No. Or was that just in LA? No. We had SWAT. So we got beat by the principal. I didn't, but the kids, you know, you'd go into the principal and he'd have a paddle and he'd hit you on the bottom. That wow. was in our school district. I did have a teacher, um, my fourth grade teacher. Like, you know, you have the homeroom teacher. My fourth grade homeroom teacher, um, she used to whip erasers at people. You know, like if you were, if, if Pam and I were goofing off in the back, it would be like, and, it, and like you'd get hit in the face with an eraser. Like that, that she was like known for that totally known for that she was a little off a little off like nowadays oh my god she would have she would have been sued out of you know there would have been out of the school district yeah but but no she um she was a little a little harsh and I I did get in um I was put in like a timeout um in kindergarten uh because uh, now and remember I started early right so I went into kindergarten and I was probably four at the time and I thought that if you plugged your ears that nobody could hear what you were saying and I'm not sure why I thought this but I just well kids think that I've seen little kids think that if they cover their eyes you can't see them like they're hiding yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's the same. You just cover their eyes and just kind of lay on the couch. Right, right. Same, same, kids, same yeah. concept. Cute. Yeah, and right. and so, um, we were all we sat at these little round tables, like you know, six and six and six at these little round tables, and it was um it was October, so I hadn't been in class that long, and she was playing one of those scary Halloween records, you know, where it's like you are alone in the forest, you know, like those with the uh, side of sound effects and stuff. And so I'm sitting there and I, and I've got my ears plugged so she can't hear me. Right. And so the record's going and I'm sitting there and I'm making fun of the voice of the lady on the record. I'm like, you are alone in the forest, you know, and and Uh she's looking around and then she picks up the needle, you know, it's like, and she's like, Robbie, Robbie, pay attention. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, pay attention oh, to the spooky voice. Sorry. You know, sorry. So, so then then she puts the needle back down and, you know, I sit there and I'm paying attention. And then, of course, two seconds later, I plug my ears and I'm like, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, 
oh because there were there was an owl or something on the record and she's like robbie what did i say and i was like oh sorry you know so i took my fingers out of my ears and then the record starts playing a little bit more and i plug my ears and they're screaming on the record so at the top of my lungs i just went ah! and screamed in the oh of the class gosh. and she's like that's it and she picks the needle up she goes robbie ruined it for everyone everyone's like oh come on oh. and then she made me go and sit in the nap room on <gasps> my on my little mat you know? the nap room right oh my God. you know those little rag rugs you'd have for nap time mm-hmm. and i had to go sit on my mat and think about what i'd done <laughs> and and what were you thinking well i was thinking i don't understand how she heard me <laughs> because like, i plugged my sense. ears you're like, I can't really quite understand how this happened. Right. Right, exactly. That's pretty funny. Yeah. How about you? Now, we, we know from past episodes that, you know, in uh, in high school, um, you know, you you were bold, let's say, in your... Uh, um, I was very bold in high school, yes. Yeah. But like earlier, before you became bold, you know, when you were just kind of a meek kid and other kids were picking on you. Did you ever get in trouble or, you know, get detention grounded, anything like that? Detention grounded at school. Um, no, I was the smart kid. I was the Pam. So I was the overachieving kid with glasses who got glasses in like second grade and got the headaches in like second grade. And I was, you know, going to the grade above me for reading, you know, all those things. So I was like the overachieving quiet group leader, so um, I did not do anything wrong, but I remember um, feeling really horrible because in about sixth grade, there was a really popular, pretty girl, and I couldn't believe she was talking to me. And anyway, I got close with this girl, and she was her parents were going through a divorce, which is very 70s, early 80s because of the right. New yeah, that's when my divorce parents got laws. divorced. Yeah. Anyway. Um, she was saying, I kind of didn't really understand this, but she was saying she wanted to die, wanted to kill herself. I kind of didn't get the concept, but I was 11. I was old enough to go, ooh, I should probably tell somebody about this. Like, what if she does this? And I knew about it. So I had this horrible um, guilt, and I thought, I've got to tell somebody. So I told my mother, and my mother was like, I have to tell the school. We can't not do anything. So anyway... We were in class and the nurse came and took her out of class and, you know, got her. And when she came back, the way she looked at me, she was furious Uh oh. that I had, you know, broken her, her, what is it, broken our, our bond and, and told about her life to somebody she was very vulnerable with me, but again, I was just in a weird situation. So she was mad at me from then on, and I felt really horrible. I didn't get in trouble or anything, but it was like because of me. So that was kind of a big thing. Um, but as far as getting in actual trouble, I never got in trouble at school until later when, you know, I'd be like truant and police would pick me up and put me in their car and bring me to the police station, <laughs> like that kind of thing. That's pretty, yeah. I mean, that's pretty It was very egregious. opposite. Yeah, like... Yeah you know, skipping class or whatever. I, there was one incident I was involved in. Now I did not directly commit this crime. Okay. But Mm. I was involved. uh, I was sort of an accessory and I was a witness, but I refused to talk because I ain't no snitch. You weren't a rat. Wow. The Italians would have been very proud of you. Go Uh, on. Okay. So here's what happened. Um, Okay. So here's what happened. Uh, I was in the stage crew, right? In the theater group in high school. Oh, fun. Right? Oh, yeah. I loved it. It was, it was wonderful. So and, fun. I got out of mind, but go on. Um, no, it was great. And, uh, so there were a couple of, um, really good friends of mine that were in it too. I don't know. There's a group of probably 10 of us, I guess. And we were pretty close. And these two guys, um, Marty and, uh, Mike, um, Marty. What grade was this? Tenth uh, grade, eleventh so grade. This was actually this was this was our senior year. Okay, go on. Okay, so um, so Marty, who incidentally, if you recall previous episodes, was my prom date, ended up being my senior right, prom date. Right. right. So shout out Marty. Um, 
Marty and Mike were uh, doing lights for other things, like not just our school plays, but like when the when we had a little chamber orchestra, you know, where all the kids were black and they did a lot of string quartet stuff and all that. And it was very, you know, hoity-toity. And so they were doing lights for that event. And it was a, it was some kind of spring concert, um, you know, f- uh, however they did that stuff, right? And so it was all the, all the brainy um, orchestra kids and everything and, and all their parents came and, you know, and I grew up in a pretty like Mayberry type place. So everybody's, you know, pretty buttoned up and everything. So they all, the, and the place is filled. There's like 700 people in the auditorium. And, um, and it's this, you know, like picture like Vivaldi music or something, you know, all this and, you know, and the, and the golf claps. Yay. And, um, during the middle of the last number, someone, um, released from way up in the rafters. So like if you're facing the orchestra, you know, from your upper right, from the ceiling, this rubber chicken swung down on a long rope from the ceiling. Oh. <laughs> it was that just, is not what I thought you were going to just say. Swinging back and forth. And the kids are all, you know, they're still playing because the conductor can't see it. <laughs> so he's like madly, you know, waving his wand around. And, you know, and the kids are like looking up. And this chicken is just like going like a pendulum. It's like, wow. <laughs> just swing it back and forth and I happen to be in the back in the lighting booth um it, so I was like in the very back of the auditorium and I was like what oh my god because I didn't know this was going to happen but um I found out that it was Marty and Mike who had done it and uh and Boy, oh boy, when the conductor turned around and he looked up and saw this rubber chicken swinging like it was, I am telling you, I have never seen anything that funny in my entire life. Like, it was so hilarious to see the processing while he looks up, you know, because he's looking, everyone is like, he turns around to take a bow the kids are all looking like, what? And then the audience is looking at him like, but the thing and what is... And then he looks up and this chicken is just swinging, you know, back and forth. And it just kind of kept swinging there until it slowly swung less and less and less. And then it just hung there. And and so everyone's like clapping, like, yay, thank you very much. And he's like, and, you know, please thank the orchestra. You know, and this chicken is just hanging over the whole orchestra. So, wow. So that, if I recall, that might have been, I think it was probably the next morning. So the next morning in the announcements, would Robbie McPherson, (gasps) Marty, Mike, Dan, Paul, um, who else? Jeff, you know, like the whole crew of us. Whoa. Please come down to the principal's office. <gasps> so we go down to the principal's office and, you know, Marty's white as a ghost and everything. And I go in there and they're like, we know you know who did this. We know that you know. And I'm like, I have no idea who did this. And they're like, yes, you do. I mean, I flat out lied. I was like, I, I don't I don't know. I'm, I don't even know how they would get up there, to be honest. I said, I, I have no idea. I'm like, I was in the lighting booth. I don't know. I was handing out programs and then I was in the booth. I don't know what happened. And, um, and from what I understand, the, um, like the maintenance guy had to come and like untie the thing and like get it out of there. <laughs> Cause this chicken was just hanging. And that That's was so an- classic. That was another hilarious thing was going into the auditorium and seeing the chicken hanging there and then watching it go doodle-dip, 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 like up to the ceiling as the guy was like pulling it up. <laughs> I mean, this rubber chicken incident, I, I can't even do it justice because it was just 
so funny. So um, anyway, I wouldn't give up anybody. I just kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. And they're like, well, don't you think that this is irresponsible? Don't you think this is a horrible thing to do? And I was like, well, sure. <laughs> of course, course it was. Of course it was a terrible thing to do. And and I, I was like, if I find out anything, I'll be sure to let you know. You know, and then I walk out and like they're all sitting there lined up and I'm like winking at them all like, yeah, I didn't tell them anything. So um, I don't know if honestly, I don't recall now if anybody ever found out that it was really Marty because I saw Marty at um, our last high school reunion, which was like five years ago, I think. Wait, that's not that long ago. And yeah, it was. And uh and we recounted uh, Jeff and Mike and Marty and I. Oh, and Phil. I'm sorry, Phil. I forgot you. Um, we sat there at this reunion and recounted the swinging chicken incident. And I was laughing so hard. Like my knees buckled and I had to sit down. There were tears coming out of my eyes. And there's a picture of me. You know, it's like, hey, everybody take a picture. I took a picture with, um, I think it was Marty and Dan and Phil and Mike maybe and my face I'm beet red and like there How there's like cute. tears in my eyes and I can't stop laughing I was just busting a gut over this I thought it was so funny so I um, love that you were you were sort of a bad girl that's so cute yeah I'm well I mean you know yeah, I mean loyal. you so weren't but I love yeah. that you had your moment yeah I it, so I guess I guess that was something we didn't get called out for but I, I got smarter in high school you know I I realized, first of all, that if you plug your ears, people can hear you. Okay. So uh, that was no longer an issue. Um, <laughs> but I was, I don't know, I was pretty good. I, I don't think I, I don't think I ever really did anything, you know, too horrible. Did you see other kids, now when you were young, did you see other kids or play with other kids whose parents had different parenting styles? And have you seen a kid get in trouble with their own parents? And, you know, have you gotten nervous for another kid to get in trouble? No, because I was that kid. Oh, really? I was the one always getting trouble, getting in trouble with my parents. And my parents were scary when they were mad okay. at me. Like, they okay. were loud and angry. So I, um, I was the one that kids felt bad for. Um, I, 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 what about oh, sorry. you? I, I do remember, I just, something just came to my head, everybody. When I was 13, my friend Erin and I hung out all the time. Her father had a bunch of pool chemicals in his garage, tons of chlorine, tons of, let's just say very highly flammable liquid. Did I already tell you guys the story? Cut it out if I did. We were light. I got into being like totally into matches and lighting fires. I was a total pyromaniac at, when I was 13. <laughs> Don't ask me why. And we were lighting matches in this garage. And I guess her father found all of the lit matches, like a little pile around all of these cr boxes and boxes of chemicals because he was a pool man long ago. And he was normally very quiet, quiet, nice dad. He had to call my mother and say she cannot come over here <laughs> again. Oh, my God. I finally was able to go back like a year later or something. But I, yeah, he's like, this is too dangerous. Well, I recall a couple of times in in my childhood where I, I usually got in trouble because I forgot to do something. Mm. Like when I, when I think of whatever I mostly got punished for, it was usually because I, you know, there's some chore that I forgot about because I forget everything. So, um, you know, and I, I was just a, I was a little like dreamy kid, you know, I was like that kid Ralphie in the, or in the cartoons. The Pisces. Yeah, exactly. Where, you know, he's always like fantasizing and he'd be sitting there in class and then he's flying a spaceship. Like that was totally me. So I would forget, you know, I'd forget to, I don't know. I was always forgetting my lunch. Um, and, uh, I was always forgetting, um, you know, if if my parents told me to do something in the morning, like, well, don't forget to, you know, put your or fold your clothes or, you know, whatever it is, I would completely forget by the time I, you know, left the room. Like, I just, foosh, was gone. 
I look back and I and I have to say that I think punishing me for those things was probably not, you know, the best um, way to develop <laughs> me because I really I really couldn't help it. Like I just didn't think that way. I think it would have been more effective maybe to, you know, help me figure out how to remember it. Well, you know what? I had something similar occur. And this actually, this method actually did work. In the morning, my mother would say, okay, come in. And when you're at a certain time, and I'm going to put your hair in the two ponytails or the two braids or the one ponytail, you know, she would do my hair real cute. And I kept forgetting to come in and I wouldn't come in on time or something. Anyway, one day she just didn't say anything. And she, and I think her method was, all right, well, then you're going to go to hair with, go to school with crazy hair, you know? So I completely forgot to go ask her to do my hair. She let me go to school. I went to the restroom. I looked in the mirror and I had from the day before one ponytail up at the top of my head, one at the bottom, all loose, all sticking out the way I had slept. (laughs) I was so embarrassed. It was so humiliating to me because I had these really tight braids. You know, typically I was very groomed in the hair. And uh, it was so humiliating. I really did never forget to ask again after that. (laughs) I don't know if that's like a nice thing to do, but it did work. Yeah, I guess you have to wonder, you know, there's probably a line. I mean, you're a parent, you know, like there's there's uh, some things are are tough love and effective and all that. And some some aren't, I guess. I mean, I didn't we had some neighbors that Mm -hmm. were um, that were pretty uh, from what we could see that were pretty strict with their kids. Like they wouldn't even let their kids talk to us, let alone play with us like all the other kids in the neighborhood um and I don't know these they had two girls and the girls just seemed to be kind of always you know sullen and and looking down and we always thought to us it was like some horrific stuff going on you know in that house like I had neighbors that um were really 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 loud this one lady would scream at her kids and we would hear them getting beat "Ah!" you know we'd hear them like run outside and we would hear all this uh, spanking and awful things. And we did have a, a couple different families we hung out with that had different parenting styles. One of them was very lax, too lax, to where, like, that kid needs to get their ass beat, you know. And then the <laughs> other one, the father was a, a Marine, and he was very, very strict. So if you did something wrong, he would spank the kid right in front of you, and you'd feel awful. Like, oh, gosh, we were just playing. Yeah. On um, this one boy who I adored, he was swinging around a hose and the, you know how the, um, the nozzles were heavy metal back then. Like, the, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the nozzle hit me in the temple. Oh yeah. I got I hit. Like, oh. I got hit in the face with a hose yeah, and nozzle. The, it was many a total times. accident, but the dad came out. What? You hit her in the head with a nozzle? Beat him right in front of us. We were like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. You know? And he just kind of took it and was always having to do like army crawls. You know, the dad would like just over the top punish this kid. Yeah. And it was different than, and also, you know, some kids weren't allowed to say fart or certain words, you know, that were considered bad words. So, okay. You know, that Well, that brings up another top, which is actually where we got this topic from. Yeah. Which is my friend Lisa, who sent, uh, she's out in Colorado and mm-hmm. she, um, is listening hey shout out lisa she said hey will you guys do an episode on you know things you did wrong and punishments and stuff and Mm -hmm. she brought up the uh washing your mouth out with soap um which my parents never did that did your parents ever do that i feel like maybe once no i never really said a bad word i just talked back and i was like why you know I needed to know why. And I do remember putting, by the way, this is off topic, but I do remember putting a book in my pants when I was going to get a spanking and my dad went to hit me and he hit a book and then he started laughing and they thought it was so clever. I was like, was it really? I was just trying to not get hurt. But anyway, yeah, washing the mouth out with soap. No, I I would think that would be reserved for if you said curse words. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was her, that was her crime. Um, Uh But even, I, I guess I never swore. I really... I, I didn't really start swearing until um, probably halfway through high school, I guess. 
and uh and then wow the floodgates opened but um i don't ever remember even my friends i don't remember anybody having their mouth washed out with soap to punish them for saying a bad word i i feel like that's kind of a old school thing you know it's very retro and you wonder if some of these punishments are you know, generational to where like, that happened to me. I'll never do that to my kid or the opposite. Well, this is the way it was done to me and this is what's going to happen to you. You know, yeah. you wonder. Yeah. I, yeah. That whole uh, cyclical thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, uh, well, I don't know. I'm not a parent, right? I'm a, I'm a mother of two cats, so I won't, I won't. Well, judge, what is but... your thought? What, what were you going to say? Um, well, I was just going to, I was just going to say, I guess it's kind of a nature versus nurture thing, right? Like mm. maybe um, maybe some people feel that the punishments made them better, you know, evolved uh, or something. And other people maybe thought that it uh, was detrimental. So I think depending on which one of those, you know, you put the cat, you know, you, which category you put your punishment in, um, it, uh, you know, like I, I look at, I look at my dad's whole, um, just walk it off kind of a thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I cannot tell you how many concussions I had when I was a kid, you know, and like full on blacked out for, you know, a couple seconds or 30 seconds or whatever it was. I fell off, <clears throat> I fell off monkey bars once hit my head, like tong pong, ting tong, yep, like going same. all the way down. And, uh, I was out for a couple seconds. I fell off. Um, you know those swings where it's like a, it's like a big pole and there's a swing on each end, and they spin. Like you, you get you get they spin. Yeah, yeah. It's like two two swings hanging on a big long pole on either end, and the pole is on the pole oh, cool. like is attached and and spins around like a helicopter. No, you know? I can picture it though. I can picture it. Yeah, and um. I fell off one of those once. My uncle grabbed a hold of the other swing and started to, you know, like make the centrifugal force, you know, was an uncle. so yeah. yeah. So I, and I, I flew out. I was like, like, you know, completely horizontal. Like the whole swing was like horizontal and I'm like 10 feet off the ground and my, and I was literally coming down and I was about to, um, hit my brother who you know, was a toddler then. And it was like, okay, either I leap off this thing or I am going to pummel right into my brother. So I just leapt off the swing and I hit the ground and I woke up with all these people standing over me, you know, like, <laughs> so you know, it's like they're waving their hands in my face, you know, like, is she alive? And I don't know. I, I, there was another time I, um, I fell some other time. I can't remember. And I was knocked out. But, you know, my dad was just like, just walk it off. You know, like, just, you'll be all right. <laughs> and I, I look back on it now and, you know, your your instinct is to be horrified. Like, oh, my God, you know. But then I think, well, I was all right. And, you know, it, it did make me tough in a lot of ways. Like, um, I agree. It's It's definitely, you don't want to oh, are you okay to every little thing because the kid cries harder. Right. That's right. what happens these days with the kid. I give them a, a little bit of a, oh, and then I go, oh, I'm so glad you're better now. You know, and then they, they kind of like follow what I'm doing. They're like, oh, yeah, you're right. I am better, you know. Right, right, right. But yeah, yeah I don't know. I think that people my age, I'm late 40s right now. I don't know anybody that hits their kids. And it's not because it's, just the law, but people don't want to. I think those of us that got spanked are very, I don't think any of us think it was some great thing. Definitely. You still want to respect your parents and, and nobody, you know, wants their kid talking back to them, but I think it can be done without hitting. And I think all of us that got hit are not into doing the same thing from what yeah, I've seen. Yeah. I, I would not disagree with that. You know, I mean, again, I feel like I'm not quite qualified because I'm, I'm not a parent, but I I think I would have to I would have to agree with that you know because on the one hand you don't want to raise a a kid who 
um, can't handle anything. You know, you don't want to raise a kid who collapses at, at the slightest challenge, but you also don't want to raise a kid whose sense of self-esteem and, and safety and all that suffers. So, I mean, that's got to be a hard, you know, a hard uh, line to walk for any parent, I think. It is. And I like the, the way people do it now. I mean, people have their own styles, obviously, but, um, I do think, gosh, it was so different back then. And I do wonder if a lot of the, you know, if you think about it, a lot of the dads when we were kids were in the Vietnam war and had military training. Yeah. And you wonder if some of the punishment kind of came from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My dad, my dad's, a, kids, you know? my dad's an army veteran. And I think, I think for sure uh, a lot of that uh, sensibility, you know, carried over, which, and, and that's kind of the stuff that I think really helped me. I mean, it maybe wasn't so helpful for, to be yelled at for, you know, not being able to see the chalkboard, you know? <laughs> I think he'd feel so bad about that. Like but I, I think so too, because I, yeah, you know, everybody does the best they can when, with what they've got, you know, so... I think my mom and dad both did. I think back to my grandparents and I think about, because my mother used to tell me that her old, her older brother would get absolutely just torn apart by our grandfather for being kind of a sissy or something like that. And um, my grandfather was in the service. He was a sniper. Like he, you know, he was a very kind of high up in the military, very, very kind to my mother, very, very kind to us girls but I think that when you are trained to be such a man, you know, especially in the World War II days, you know, you have a child and he hasn't seen any of the things you've seen and he doesn't seem grateful for the warm meal or won't finish the food. And, you know, you wonder if those men thought, thought, how dare this kid? He has no idea what it was like being in the trenches, you know, and maybe went a little too far. Right. I yeah. can see that happening. Yeah, and and the um, wanting to instill some strength in your kids, I think too that that's part of it. It's like you you want to you want to teach them to be able to make it on their own and to fly. You know, you don't want to make everything too easy. Um, you know, so that's the whole walk it off. <laughs> I think when you're like four and five, though, it's too crazy. I think as they get older, you got to slowly help them to do it everything other you know if they're five and six right you know maybe I don't know you know you put yourself in the position of these people who were raised under you know different circumstances or had different life experiences Mm -hmm. and um and even mommy dearest you guys when I read that I thought oh I know exactly what happened because I read the story of Joan Crawford her actual life Mm -hmm. and it was so awful and horrible and she struggled so much to get to where she was then she adopted these kids who were blessed from birth with these beautiful parties and da 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 and they kind of didn't know to be grateful because that's all they had ever seen Mm -hmm. they weren't as grateful as she thought they should have been and obviously she went you know went insane and flew off the handle and was way too much (laughs) but to her she was thinking you have no idea what it's really like you know so yeah, I, that, I, I wonder about those people from other times, you know. That movie, um, I mean, such a classic 80s. It, it Visually, it's so stunning. Like the cinematography, you know, it was all rich. I think it was Cinemascope or something. But the, it, purposefully, they, they made it that old Hollywood glamour grand, you know, and Faye Dunaway with that, that performance. And, you know, she gets so... I, I've seen some interviews and stuff where she uh, she's seems to not really love the fact that that's part of her history. <laughs> um, but and and it's so campy now. I know everybody s- says that. But when you watch it, like she's in it, you know, I, she she really like chewed up the scenery and pulled something from inside her to create that that on screen. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty meaty for performance and. The the thing that always kills me though is um Christine's lines, you know. I mean to me that movie has a couple of great moments. One 
where Joan is sitting in the Coca Cola boardroom, and the, all those guys, <laughs> That's my favorite. right? They they think they're I just channel gonna, that all the time. Yeah, they they think that they're me. all okay. Well, thank you very much, um, Mrs. Steele, but you know you're not needed here, and you can just go home and make a sandwich or whatever. And she's Ooh, she's got sister. that fur hat and those gloves, and she just starts like nodding her head a little bit, like bobbing it from side to side, you know, and she peels those gloves off one finger at a time, you know, and puts them in front of her. And then she goes, don't F with me, fellas. (laughs) Like it's the best (laughs) line ever because they're all just like, yeah, yeah. Love it. I love that. That was the best part of that that, movie. That was a classic. And then, but the, the Christine lines to me, all the the kid and the older Christine, they were all the, to me, they were the funny lines. Like, Joan is over the top and crazy, and you assume that most of those rants were fueled by alcohol, too, right? But Christine, I mean, you know, I am not one of your fans, you know? <laughs> like, love that it. Line is so, just, that is camp man that's camp and then the I... little girl when she wouldn't eat the steak oh you know she just sat there like that's like you and your tuna fish you know like she just sat oh well there. it's also by the way side note me and any kind of canned green bean you know i would sit at that table all night you know and have some del monte french green beans no but yeah uh crazy crazy movie i had a friend who shall remain nameless but she would even say it was today. My mother was like 10 times worse than mommy <gasps> dearest. I had a friend whose mom really? was just like that. No she still kidding. is. No so kidding. bad. She wow. would beat her so terribly. Yes. Well, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I it mean, was we, terrible, you know, she you... also was very um, charismatic and beautiful and um, had the funniest, craziest lines, but she was so violent and out of control. It was like, what the heck is wild. So, Super yeah, that, and that that goes back to what we were saying before about the outward appearances, right, of other kids and, and their punishments and stuff. Because you, you never knew what was going on, you know, behind closed doors. And, and maybe, you know, I'm looking at all these kids that seemingly had these perfect um, childhoods. And, you know, if, if we got them on the podcast, maybe they'd be like, Oh, honey, sit down. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you, my friend would sit down and tell us every story. She has problems of talking about it, which is why I am. But her mom, even when I was a little kid, I remember her biting a chunk of her mom's lipstick and then her, her mom just beating her with a brush, you know, like just, just tearing her to shreds. Wow. But yeah, it went on all through uh, until about, I think middle school when my friend finally fought her back. Wow. But her mom broke her nose with the phone, like <gasps> beat her with the, with the phone. Like, yeah, crap. like, yeah, like see that, that? I mean, that's downright yeah. abuse, you know? I mean, that I'm is talking, straight like, up beautiful like, home, abuse. Beautiful life. Yeah, everything looked beautiful, but her, her mother would beat the shit out of her, and it was crazy. Wow. Crazy. But yeah, and, and I forgot. Yeah, the whole food, another thing with the food is definitely... If you don't eat your vegetables, you're going to have to sit there until you finish them. And how many of us sat there until the sun went down? I'm raising my hand, everybody. Yeah, raising I my... didn't ha- I I didn't really have that. My my parents were not um you know, they never forced me to consume anything. You know, it, That's nice. It um... wasn't that wasn't really a thing like if I but I I did like vegetables I ate enough vegetables but you know me and my whole sugar addiction like yeah but were they canned vegetables like sloppy gray vegetables oh my mom wait hold on folks breaking news my mom says we have to talk about how my oma put sugar on everything oh this is a big clue this is a big clue everybody right right you always cleaned your plate at her house. Wait, even on the vegetables? She would, well, she would put uh, a little sugar on spinach and I would eat that stuff. You know, I'd gobble it up. That's actually yeah. kind of smart then. Yeah, it wasn't bad too. It was like, it was like a kind of a creamed spinach type thing, but she would put oh. a little sugar on it. It actually was good. I don't know if 
I don't know if it would be good today. I don't know how that. Well, my mom would open up a can and God love her. She, you know, this is what she was, how it was back then. And and out of the can would be like plop, all these like cut up gray, green beans in this water, you know, and it'd be like a slop on my plate. And it just made my gag reflex. It hit my gag gag reflex and the color of them was just so unnatural. I couldn't eat them. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of canned beans. You know, canned corn, that's all right. Um, canned corn's pretty good, but yeah, canned, canned mushrooms, mushrooms are okay. But like be canned. canned carrots, no. Canned beans, no. Listen, if you're in a bunker and, you know, you're, you you have no other choice, fine, eat some canned. But don't, I mean, you could buy fresh. Right. Buy fresh. Okay, yeah, disgusting. Oh, and how ma- many of mom us... is, hold on, breaking news again. Oh, mom is claiming breaking. she never gave canned vegetables mom i'm here to tell you that's not true however you're right most of the time you you served fresh vegetables like because you always had tomatoes growing and things like that yeah in your constant fight to keep me away from sugar (laughs) ask her if she remembers you breaking into those diet candies the aids diet candies mom do you remember me breaking into your um your aids caramels no, she does not recall. Does she remember finding you at the sugar bowl? Do you remember finding me under the dining room table at the Sheridan Drive house pouring sugar on saltine crackers? No. Do you remember me at all? Okay, I have a question for your mother. This is serious business, everybody. All right, everybody brace yourselves. Mrs. Robbie Ann, tell us the thing that you remember Robbie getting in trouble for? What was her bad moment where you were like, she's a bad girl today? Got to speak up, Mom. You know what? I don't remember her bad, but I do, I do recall when your dad was in Vietnam and you and I lived with Grandma, and I left you alone for like five minutes. You know, you were in the kitchen. Yeah, Mom, nobody can hear you. Oh, I put, <laughs> so mom's, uh, mom, mom's reclining on the couch here, so you can't quite hear her, but apparently when I was about two, I, um, got into under the sink, there was a big can of coffee oh. and I poured it out, um, and made a little sandbox type thing on the kitchen floor. <laughs> That, I don't remember that, Mom. So that's a good one. I like it. <laughs> now, did I? What did you do? Did you? Did you, like, smack me, or what? What was your? No. What was the punishment? No, you were um, oh no, Robbie! Yeah. That's what you said. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, she exactly said she just happened. yelled. Oh no, Robbie! Look what you did! Oh, and I'm just yep, yep. la 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 la. So okay, Aim, we're out of time. Oh, yeah. Really? And, you know, a good discussion, like some serious topics, you know, sure. um, and we we sincerely want to encourage um, anyone who is a victim of any type of abuse to please get help. Um, you know, there are 800 lines and, and domestic violence lines. And if you we do not mean to make light of no, any no. sort of abuse. No, we are but, not. You know, we are not this, making light we're of also that. talking about the past and just how it was. You know, it's a, it's in no way funny, but it is something that many of us share the memory of. You know. Yeah, and and for parents out there who might be struggling too, um, you know, there are lots of resources. So just you know, look for you you can call mental health helplines and um all kinds of things so we want to we just want to make sure that people understand we take our own experiences lightly but um we don't necessarily it's, take these topics lightly the topic is not to be taken lightly um i agree yeah correct um so that being said uh we want to thank you guys for listening and thanks to lisa for sending in this topic which um, was interesting, and I was happy to relive the infamous rubber chicken incident <laughs> you of love Clarence that thing. High School. Yeah, I mean that was that was something else. I, I mean, I've probably that, that has to be one of the top five times I laughed the hardest in my life. You know, 
hey, that's a good one. Maybe we'll do an episode on uh, just gut laughs, like things that made oh, us gut yeah, laugh. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So true. Yeah. I've got some. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So thanks, you guys. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate you being here. Hit us up on um, Instagram, Glitter Bee Girls, or Twitter, Glitter Bee Girls. We have a website, too, glitterboomgirls.com. And uh, you can reach us at any any one of those. So um, we're happy to have you with us. I'm Robbie M. McPherson on the East Coast. And I'm Amy Asbury on the West Coast. And we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.